Hey friends, it's John. You're in the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. When I get a new climbing rope, the very first thing I do is fashion a JRB end loop on the end of both sides of the rope. See my video, Rope Rigging Options with the JRB end loop. It makes it easy to put a rope in a tree and get it through a tree crotch really easily even when we're working in low light conditions and even when we have gloves on and even when we're trying to get the rope not just through a tree crotch but when we're trying to get it through something as challenging as a floating anchor. The JRB end loop always works. With this video, I'll be taking down the very first video I did on this about a year ago, and here it is on the left, the original JRB end loop. This was before we figured out a way to tap the cord literally through the rope. So this video is going to go away if you ever want to find it. I'll leave a link in the video description of this video. You can find the original version. But I'm going to take that down from the channel and make that a hidden video so it doesn't confuse anyone. But version 2 remains viable, and, and here it is. All we're really doing today is taking version 2, and we're adding a piece of heat shrink tubing to that variant. And we're also, I'm going to go ahead and standardize on the use of this 2 millimeter accessory cord because I've experimented. This is version 2 that I'm holding on 9 millimeter rope. I also created it with 3 millimeter power cord. And although it worked, I found that I preferred the 2 millimeter better. Uh, it just it was always stable where this sometimes even though it's a sliding double fisherman's knot sometimes that got a little bit loose and I had to hand tighten it and here I've got a variant which I really like because what I did is I took that flopping end I took this end and I buried it inside the heat shrink tubing so I like that option and here here I have it again with the brand new Rougarou in 8 millimeter and here's the Rougarou 10 millimeter I just created this and we'll be duplicating that in a moment if you refer to my website, jrbtreeclimbing.com, you'll find a page for the JRB end loop, which details everything I'm going to do here today, including everything we need. I'm starting with a piece of 24 inches of 2 millimeter accessory cord. And if we zoom in closely and take a look at the ends, the upper one has been prepared. It's been heated and if we can see that it's really smooth it's really smooth but this lower one has not been you can see it's kind of fuzzy and we need to prepare both of these because we need them to be almost like a, a needle because we're going to thread them through a hole in the rope that we create so I, I grab a lighter I just flip with such a short cord it only takes a very short amount of time to get that melted and then I I smooth it out so it's it's as smooth as it possibly can be. The next step is preparing the rope. Here I have an eight penny nail which is just a little thicker probably around three millimeter and I'm using a two millimeter cord and I'm going to use this to effectively tap a hole in the rope. So I've got that you know basically three quarters of an inch from the end of this portion and I'm just going to put that through the center of the rope. I'm going to leave that in there. I'm going to let that get heated up when I flame the end of the rope. I now grab my knife. It's easier to do this at a, at a bench than it would be here in this position. But I'm going to be making a cut about... A half inch away at least a centimeter away from the end of the rope and you could see uh, and I'm sorry about a half inch from the nail now these modern ropes the, the outer part of them is a modern Technora fiber and it is not flammable and it will not melt as long as the inner fibers can melt we're good to go and that's the next step. I'm going to grab my lighter and I'm going to hold this in a position so I don't burn myself with my hand above necessarily try to keep it far enough away and I'm going to apply flame here for uh, probably 30 seconds.
a little bit of judgment involved. And as soon as I take my lighter away, I've got a rag ready to basically swab that. I'm going to swab this and, and make it as smooth as I could possibly get it. Inside of there, the core has melted. And really hard to keep you in view, and I apologize for that because this is obviously a take one situation. But inside of there, the core has melted. And so what I'll do is I'm going to let that nail cool. I'm just going to touch it to make sure I can. I can touch it and rotate it. And I'm going to let that cool down just a little bit. Okay, it's about a tight a zoom level as I can manage but let's watch what happens when I remove that nail if I remove that nail I can actually see through can see can see the light through there right there you can just kind of see it basically I've got line of sight I can thread the needle that's basically what I'm going to do now I'm going to thread this through a little twist and I've got great luck with that. And I think one of the reasons why is because I have the nail in there while I'm doing the heating operation. And that simply helps it get, um, you know, a little bit of heat on the nail itself and to keep those fibers in place. Okay, now I need to tie a sliding triple fisherman's knot. I prefer the triple over the double just due to the extra stability. I've got that cord arranged such that the right side is just a little bit shorter about four inches shorter than the other I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to try my best to stay in your field of view I'll take that longer strand here on the bottom and I'll flip it up such that the two ends are touching each other and I'll size out a loop there where I can get about three fingers through it I want this as small as possible it'll get a little bigger as I as I tie dress and set it and now, as per the prior video on the sliding triple fisherman's, with that upper strand, I'm going to make three coils working from right to left over the whole assembly. One, two, three. I'll take that end and slide it under the three coils that I just made. Oh, that went remarkably well. Now, the harder part, I'm going to reorient this 180 degrees. Let's get in your field of view. And I'm going to repeat that now on the right side. One, two, three. I got to look backwards to see if you're still there. And shoot this through. Really, really difficult for me to tie this and, and uh, stay in view. Hopefully I've done so, but I think we can zoom in now. And So that's the beast. Let's tighten it. So we're going to want to tighten that pretty good. I'll, I'll even put a little carabiner on that and pull, and then we'll put on the heat shrink tubing. Okay, so I've got a carabiner here, and I pulled on that really good to get it set nice and tight. And now what I'll do is I'll get it into position because it is a sliding knot. I can shorten the loop. A little tough to move that's because I set it so nicely so you can see there I've got pretty small tiny I couldn't even fit a pencil through there I've got the barrel of this sliding triple fish really close to the and this would work just like this it's just that we can make it a lot more pretty and sleek in terms of this not not getting offset we want it to be when we're going through a floating anchor we want this to be looking right down the barrel of the gun so to speak and what I'll do now 
is I will take my pre-cut piece of this is one half inch diameter and it barely works. I, I, I expected I would have had a little spare here and I'm going to use that. I'll, I'll basically let it push back. I'm going to have it push back those those strands, those working ends. And it's a little bit, I would need, if I went with 11 millimeter rope, I would need something slightly bigger. But as soon as I've got it over the end, I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to go another quarter of an inch, but I want to cut these ends off now. I want to cut them off now so that they're buried under the heat shrink. Push this back a little further. And I'm just kind of get that in position. We got to be happy with, with where it is. Feels pretty good to me. Now, if you had a heat gun, you wouldn't need to use a lighter. I don't happen to have a heat gun, so here goes nothing. I'll start by putting the heat at the base around the rope and letting that heat spread towards the other end. I don't want to overheat that, that two millimeter cord. There's some judgment here to this. I'm no expert. But uh, if you need heat shrink tubing, there's kits as well as I'm now buying it in bulk. Uh, it's just great stuff to have. You'll find uses for it beyond climbing. And I'm going to let that cool down for a minute and we'll rig it in the tree. Let's take a close look at that. It's really nice and sleek and it'll pass through through anything. Okay, so here's my paracord preset and I've got a little rigging carabiner and it goes onto my JRP end loop. And that just, and even with such a tight crotch, that just goes right through. And that's not the pressing challenge. The pressing challenge is getting something to pass through a floating anchor and this passes with flying colors all right there you have it there's my JRB end loop i'll be looking forward to getting on this brand new rougarou and showing you what we can do with it soon but again the first thing i do when i get a climbing rope anymore is i put a pair of JRB end loops on it thanks <laughs>